today we start discussing about the immediate cause of the first world war now if you remember when we started discussing the various causes of the world war we mentioned something about an immediate cause which was supposed to trigger the first world war well now that you have seen the various reasons which brought the world to the brink of war a discussion of the immediate cause now becomes relevant and important so what is it that happened till now so we see that there's a rise of aggressive nationalism in europe which is leading to a growth of conflict wherein almost all the countries are in conflict with each other and they're justifying their actions as means of self preservation moving on from that we see that there is a competition a fierce sense of competition regarding what the acquisition of colonies and due to this competition we see that these countries are arming themselves to the teeth and also creating secret alliances with like minded nations and with these alliances these nations are ready to defend their allies in the situation of a war now needless to say with these alliances we see that there is a division of europe into two armed camps now in such situations the absence of a proper platform for international peacekeeping and for cooperation makes the situation much more worse and finally we see the integration of all these phenomenons is being properly showcased in the unstable region which we know as the balkans now the balkans are often described as the gunpowder barrel of europe and now we will focus on the matchstick which blew this gunpowder barrel up now we'll discuss the sarajevo crisis which makes up the immediate cause of the first world war do you remember the various states and the countries which make up the balkan region to refresh your knowledge and to know more click on the link below to access the i dictionary feature now if you remember the discussion on balkans we saw that there were many newly formed independent states which emerged out of the previously ottoman occupied regions now of these newly independent states mention must be made of bosnia and herzegovina but unfortunately we remember how in the year 1908 we see that austria hungary is taking advantage of the weakness of these newly independent territories and annexing these two states into the united annexed territory of bosnia and herzegovina in this illustration we see how the austrian soldiers boots are stepping over bosnia herzegovina and claiming these territories for themselves now needless to say the bosnian public was not exactly happy about this foreign occupation put upon them by the austro-hungarian power so the thing is the bosnians belong to the ethnic group known as the slavs and they wanted to unite with the other slavic states particularly serbia now serbia itself had the dream of a united slavic state therefore serbia acting out of its own self interest is attempting to oust the austrians out of bosnia and herzegovina eventually the serbians claim these territories as their own and this leads us to the bosnian crisis to know more about the bosnian crisis click the link below to access the i dictionary feature so how exactly is serbia intervening into bosnia and herzegovina well we see that serbian revolutionaries particularly organizations such as the infamous black hand whose members you can see right over here in the picture these organizations are acting and are therefore causing political interference in bosnia and herzegovina and in that they're helping the bosnians to fight for their independence now while the serbian government is not really financing or are claiming that these revolutionaries are sent by them they are not doing anything to stop their activities either Now before we move ahead can you answer this simple question what was the name of a prominent serbian revolutionary group was it the black death was it the black hand was it the white peril or was it the yellow fever 
the correct answer is the black hand. So therefore we saw how organizations such as Black Hand are operating in Bosnia and Herzegovina and are helping the Bosnians raise their banner for independence. But the thing is, the Bosnians themselves were frustrated by centuries of foreign occupation. At first the Ottomans and then the Austrians. Before the Austrians annexed Bosnia and Herzegovina, they used to informally and indirectly control it through various treaties. For the Bosnians, one thing was pretty clear. What they wanted was freedom, unrestricted and unquestionable. And therefore we see that the Serb nationalists were actually supported by the Bosnians, who were frustrated with their political situation in their homeland. So the Serb nationalists did not have to put much effort into riling the Bosnian public, as the Bosnian public were frustrated as it is. And in this way, we see how Bosnia and Herzegovina became the center of rebellions in the entire Balkan region. In this situation of political turmoil and rebellion, we see that on June 28, 1914, Archduke Francis Ferdinand, who was the crown prince of Austria, is arriving at Sarajevo along with his wife Sofia, now, Sarajevo is the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, the question might come up, why is the Crown Prince of Austria visiting the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina? It was simply to show that the Austrian crown controls Bosnia and Herzegovina and therefore it was a symbol of authority and power. That is why we see the Crown Prince and his wife are visiting the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is Sarajevo. The Archduke's trip to Sarajevo, however, did not go as planned. Seven young Bosnian Serb nationalists planned to assassinate the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who happened to be the Crown Prince of Austria and Hungary. The plan was to bomb his vehicle while it is parading him and his wife through the streets of Sarajevo. Now, while the conspirator seemingly blended with the crowd, his attempt to bomb the car failed as the bomb bounced and exploded nearby. Now, this led to a commotion which led to the conspirator being spotted and therefore he was arrested by the Austrian troops nearby. After this unsuccessful attempt, the car which was carrying the Archduke was rerouted through a different route. But on this route stood Gavrilio Princip a 19-year-old Serbian nationalist. He knew that he only had one opportunity and he seized it. He shot and killed the Archduke and his wife. This caused the Sarajevo crisis, which eventually will lead us to the First World War. The Crown Prince of Austria-Hungary was shot down by a Serbian nationalist who happened to be a schoolboy. Till now, the war was looming, but after this incident, the war became inevitable. After the Sarajevo crisis, there came a one-month period of immense political instability. This is known as the July crisis. Let us look at the July crisis in detail. Now, what was the July crisis? It was a month-long chain reaction of events, which means that one event led to the other. And this started after the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who was the Crown Prince of Austria-Hungary. And this assassination took place in Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia-Herzegovina. So in this map, as you can see, Bosnia-Herzegovina is a territorial part of Austria-Hungary and Serbia is present right here. While tracing the July crisis, this map is important as Austria-Hungary and Serbia are the core elements behind the July crisis. Now let us see how the July crisis panned out. Now this July crisis started with an Austrian ultimatum to Serbia, but it ended in the declaration of war. Franz Ferdinand's assassin Gavrilio Princip was arrested and interrogated by police and military authorities. Now he and his collaborators confessed and testified that they acted independently without the help and support of Serbia. But the Austrian government felt that Serbia was involved somewhere or the other. 
Now, Austrian investigators found out that some Serbian nationalists were trained by a Serbian military officer. Now, the militarists in the Austro-Hungarian imperial government saw this as an opportunity to invade Serbia and to crush all its rebellious elements. This situation brought all major European leaders to the forefront, in one way or the other. Now, while some of them were against the idea of war, the others were hell-bent on firing the first shot. On the 5th of July, Kaiser Wilhelm II issued his famous blank check statement to Austria, which allowed Austria to proceed with any action it feels fit for Serbia, and Germany would protect Austria in case Russia intervenes. But privately, Kaiser Wilhelm and his military advisor and chief von Mock wanted war with France and Russia sooner rather than later. And as a consequence of which, the Kaiser urged his Austrian allies to deal with Serbia promptly and ruthlessly. This led to Austria-Hungary sending an ultimatum to Serbia on July 23rd. Now, this ultimatum consisted of 10 strictly worded clauses along with an obligation of the Serbians to respond and to agree to all these terms within 48 hours. Now, let us look at the firmly worded clauses as the demands of the ultimatum sent to Serbia by Austria-Hungary. Now, of the 10 clauses, three are extremely important. So, let us look at those. First was the banning of Serbian publications which are responsible for anti-Austrian propaganda. So any newspaper, periodical or even books which showcase any form of anti-Austrian propaganda in it have to be banned or have to be put out of publication by the Serbian government itself. Second, removal of any anti-Austrian individuals from the Serbian military government and civil service. So if any person who holds in his heart any sentiments against Austria and happens to work for the Serbian government or the Serbian military or in any way is involved with the Serbian civil order, that person needs to be removed from his position. And finally, and the most important clause, which is also the most controversial one, is the joint Serbian-Austrian investigation into the assassination plot conducted within Serbia by Austrian officials and involving the investigation and interrogation of Serbian civilians and also military personnel. So what it says in a simple manner is that there would be an investigation which would be conducted within the borders of Serbia. Now this investigation, though in name being jointly Serbian and Austrian, would be conducted by Austrian officials operating within Serbian soil and interrogating people of Serbia and even the military personnel of Serbia and if possible convicting them of the assassination plot. Now this clause infamously called the section or the term number six became increasingly controversial within the Serbian government when they received the ultimatum. Now how do you think Serbia responded to this ultimatum? Let us see that. Upon receiving the ultimatum from Austria-Hungary, Serbia seek the counsel of its closest ally, Russia. Now, Russia publicly chose to condemn the ultimatum, but it knew that it lagged behind Germany in military preparedness and therefore refused to provide any military assistance to Serbia. Serbia therefore responded to the Austrian ultimatum within the deadline where it chose to accept all the terms except the point number six regarding the joint Austrian-Serbian investigation as it was supposed to be a breach to their sovereignty. The Austrian Emperor Franz Joseph did not take this well and he declared war on Serbia on July 28, 1914, exactly a month after the assassination of the Archduke. Austria-Hungary declaring war on Serbia started a domino effect of powers of Europe getting involved in this war, this leading to the First World War. Now the July crisis is best depicted in this illustration where we see Serbia being attacked by Austria wherein Russia, who is an ally of Serbia, declares war on Austria. Now since Austria is supported and protected by Germany, Germany happens to attack Russia 
And since France is an ally of Russia to the Entente Agreement, France declares war on Germany. And in this way, one after another European power gets drawn into the battle and we see the First World War and its many different participants. So in this video, what did we see? We saw how the Balkan problem is being accentuated by the other reasons and causes behind the First World War and that is leading us to the immediate cause of the war, that particular event which triggers the First World War itself and that event happens to be the Sarajevo incident. After the Sarajevo incident, we learn about the one month period called the July crisis where due to further political instability, we see one of the major nations declares war on the other, thus leading all the other allies associated with these two nations being drawn into the political whirlpool of war. And that is what we see in this particular video and in the next video onwards we will look at the exact outbreak of the war and how these nations exactly got involved.